What's up, YouTube? Uh, it's gonna be part two of the motorized drift track build out of an old moped that I got from a friend. And yeah, basically says we're just converting a moped into a drift track. So yeah, so today we're going to, I need to weld some stuff up up here, get that covered too. Actually, the diameter of the hole in this, this is a steer tube from one of those Razor electric scooters. And just so happens that the diameter of the hole in the middle is like just the slightest bit smaller than the diameter of this uh, steerer. So I was able to pound it on there a little bit. I got started, I just threw this on there to see what it would look like. But yeah, get that welded up. And then the battery tray from part one, I will also weld that up. Yeah. Let's get to pound it on that thing, welding it up. have yet to figure out how I'm going to do this the drive so I bought this uh, little sprocket for like a just for like a dirt bike and if I just tap some holes in this that this can screw into and it'll be actually like a locking nut mechanism because this this is threaded and that this is threaded too I don't think it's gonna come loose I think we'll get a Dremel and I hope Dremel away part of this uh, around here. to get these two holes that need to be drilled into here centered what I'm going to do is uh, you have to find a distance between these two holes so I can drill them on here accurately because this if this thing is just off center at all there's gonna be a lot of issues with chain tension although I mean it's gonna be a really short chain it really shouldn't even be an issue anyways but really don't want to change just flopping all over the place so, so, for 
first step is where you're going to get the outer diameter between these two bolts 1.383 so run to that calculator I'm going to add the inner diameter between these two 0.974 so that gives us this 2.375 we're going to get the average of this, so divide that by 2, and that is the distance between the center of these two bolts. Uh, I'm going to count how many splines there are here, I'm going to mark this one. So we got 19 splines on this one. This is from down here, I have that marked, probably can't see that, all the way around here. There's nine splines right here and nine splines right here. And then these two are a little one spine apart, so there's one more spline. So that makes 19. And right in the middle of that spline is going to be where I need to mark this. I was just tapping the hole. Look good and really glad with the way it turned out. I put this on there, it is, and then I put this on there, and it is very centered. This is much more centered than I actually thought it would end up being. I'm pretty impressed with how centered it is. But I gotta go to the store real quick. I need to get some longer bolts. Realize these bolts definitely are not long enough so this is what I found Your countersink I feel like this will be more convenient for the clearance of the chain all right so I just got back from the store uh, yeah those are the new bolts and those are four mil not five mil like these also I actually think this countersink the way that it goes back like that will actually allow room for the chain to just sit here and not end up actually interfe interfering. So that should actually work out, I feel like. But I am going to put some uh, blue Loctite in there, maybe red, but I think I'm just going to try blue and see how that works. Folds up, it's fine. But yeah, it's a pretty good progress today. I uh, forgot some parts on the way. I got a uh, gold chain. It's going to look cool. A uh, gold four, no, 420 chain coming. Uh, I got the throttle because the throttle on here was actually broken when he gave it to me. Um, I got different grips. I'm not going to be using these clamp on grips anymore because the grip that's going to be on the throttle, I want it to match the other side. <laughs> 